Hello, I'm Sadie Miller, and this is The Legend of the Travelling TARDIS. My name is Christian Basil. Years ago, I had an idea. I got myself a TARDIS, took it to new places, met a lot of new people, took some great pictures, and talked Doctor Who. From Krypton Radio and the creators of the Hanging With web show, this is the legend of the traveling TARDIS. Join me on my latest adventures and become part of the legend. Welcome to the legend of the Travelling TARDIS. My name isn't Christian Basil, I'm Benji Clifford. You may recognise my voice from the Big Finish podcast. But today I'm guest hosting this wonderful podcast. It's a pre-recorded podcast and we are joined by the lovely Sadie Miller and an all-star guest a group of people who are here to enjoy this journey with us. Let's see if they can pop up. Look, there, there they we are. Go. What a beautiful <laughs> bunch of people. Lovely. How's it going, Sadie? Yes, good, Benji. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very well. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't think we've ever actually... Have we worked together? I don't think we have. Maybe once. We, we did once, didn't we? We worked together. Yeah. We did... I don't know if it's even out yet, actually. Oh, but, no. Um, it was, it was <laughs> like... It was a weird day because we had a million different... I was there doing like, engineering at a million different sessions. I think you were in the afternoon and it was... Yeah, it was, it was a crazy one. But what lovely fun that was. We don't work together enough. We've got to sort that out. I know. I always end up um, being with Jack, I think, from Low Post. Oh, he's a so, lovely yeah. man. He's a lovely, lovely man. Yeah, he's great. Um, we'll have to poke someone so that we can do some more jobs together. I'll, I'll have a word. I'll have a word. <laughs> well, I'm joined here by uh, a great bunch of people. Um, should we all introduce ourselves? I don't know who'd like to go no, first. No, we're done here. Just introduce Sadie. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> they know us. They know us by now. They know us oh, by there now. there we go. If they don't, I've been watching. Well, well, Sadie, I guess the most important question, and the question everybody's dying to know, is how was your Christmas? Because that is, <laughs> it's January. It's the 9th of Jan when we're recording oh, this. Wow um and so yeah how was your christmas yeah it was very nice i um i keep wishing people happy new year i don't know when the cutoff point for that is um but no it was today. lovely yeah today february I, um, happy new year. <laughs> chinese new year's in february yeah yeah yeah, definitely um so i had my my children over christmas that was very nice they're two and five so obviously it's very magical for them still so that was great and then we went away for for new year just a little staycation so yeah no it's very nice how was everyone else's christmas everyone have a a nice covid free time splendid thank you (laughs) well that's actually a good question we'll go ahead and bring in the panel we'll introduce dave chapman how was your christmas there dave yeah small but small but nice Kind of oh, small, stayed. Uh, it's it's a busy season for me because my birthday's right before it, and we've always got a holiday series on uh, on the website. So it's always busy, but still nice to not have everything else to deal with. We were just talking about this earlier. It's just like um, they didn't even let the holidays settle in before um, they brought out the Valentine stuff mm-hmm. in the stores for Christmas, mm-hmm. and it's just like. And it's not just Valentine's, it's Valentine's for 2025, the year that it gets <laughs> on. They're already bringing out that stuff out there. And oh, it's already God, no. out there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if this is your first time watching us, welcome to the Legend of the Traveling Tardis. I am the host, Christian Basil, Benji Clifford from Big Finish. He's been so wonderful to take over because I'm still getting over something that Florida is just going crazy about right now. Mm. I won't go into too much of the detail, but luckily it was just a sinus infection, but it's really been... It was a week of, uh, I, I like taking a week off work, but not for the reasons why I had to take a week off work last week. This so stuff <laughs> was not fun out there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, also some uh, actor Simon Fisher Becker played Dorian Moldavar and is one of the team here at the Legend of the Traveling Tardis. Out there. Yeah, I, I'm very, there. I feel very privileged to be okay. part of your team. It's excellent. If you see him on tour, make sure that you're checking out 
fisherbecker.info and you can actually see his banner with the legend of the traveling target so we are <coughs> we are so <clears throat> happy to have him on board and how was your christmas <laughs> Well, my, my Christmas was a, a, a mixture, really. Um, uh, me and Tony, we've been lucky that we've sort of missed uh, the COVID has steer cleared of us, but uh, we have lost uh, a number of close friends uh, this year. So the Christmas card list was much shorter. Uh, but so we had a quiet Christmas. We spent Christmas Day with our neighbours, which was nice. And then the rest of the time after Christmas, I had to deal with some miscreants who attacked my Facebook page and my Twitter account. I know, but but worry not, that, I too. built a lot of dolls and I collected a lot of pins. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, so there we go. So mixed, mixed blessings. Um, it's always nice to try and be positive in the new year. So that's what it is. This is positive. My first casting with you guys hmm. and um, many more to come. Well, I have to say, Simon, you were actually already a part of uh, my new year because I was I was watching the telly the other day and um, they just did that Harry Potter um, quiz thing. It was just on. So I was yes. like, oh, that? and who should appear as uh, as the appear? guest advisor for was it for, uh, was it for Gryffindor? Or no, 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 no. They got it wrong. Oh. Oh. That's it. You're fired. Oh, yeah. oh, wait. Oh. We can oh, get away with it. It's, it's one of two. It's not a Harry Potter <laughs> Yeah, you can do it. It's yes. okay, Sadie. We're a Doctor Who podcast, so we'll get back yeah. to it eventually. <laughs> All roads lead. It, it, it's like six. Was it six degrees of Kevin Bacon? It, seven degrees of Doctor Who. Somewhere, Doctor Who touches somebody, <laughs> whether you like it or not. Very true. Yeah. Uh, and the lovely Joey Reynolds over at Geek Radio America. How was your Christmas? Oh, the Packers are number one seed and home field advantage in the playoffs, Bubba. <laughs> That's all that needed to happen? That was your Christmas? Yeah, well, I mean, that was last weekend. But no, it, it was uneventful, but quiet, very quiet. And uh, a nice little stay at home, but um, a COVID-free Christmas as well. It's, um, but but yeah, it's, it's I, well, we're ready for Mardi Gras down here. That's the important yes. thing, being in New Orleans. So yeah, the there's a little hotel ruling. Mm, yeah. <gasps> always ahead of the game there mm -hmm. but i'm going to turn this over and i'll ask that question to benji how was your christmas our guest host today while i try to recover over here and sit on the I side don't... and we're going to introduce our special guest miss sadie miller oh benji, i had a lovely you... christmas it was very chill it was very nice a quiet one this year but i quite i quite liked it because it was a little bit different you know uh so i just i just just you know spent it with my family i think we all went a bit mad because uh obviously we're not going out as much because of covid got to keep our heads down and all that so subsequently we just spent everything that we would spend on going out on lots of food and lots of drinks so it was very nice it was very uh, gregarious but uh i, I thoroughly enjoyed it i refuse to believe it's over yet i'm still i'm still in <laughs> christmas mode i know i i know i'm being bitter but mm -hmm. This is why I'm not. This is one of my beefs against Mr. Chippel. Every Christmas has always been uh, has been a Doctor Who Christmas with a new episode coming out over here. And the last two up two Christmases have kind of like everybody, my friends were all you know we we watch now old episodes. We watch the the, the classic ones with Matt Smith and David Tennant and and and, uh, and Peter Capaldi. And it's just like it's not. It doesn't feel like Christmas unless there's a Christmas episode. Mm -hmm. And I'm also mm -hmm. adding this for RTD because he, I'm not only uh, hoping you bring it back, but all I'm going to say is this if Lifetime Network can put out four Christmas episodes mm -hmm. and four Christmas movies mm -hmm. in one year, you can go out there and put out a Christmas episode. I don't care. I just want one. I, I miss <laughs> them when they're gone. Now, if you want to include Halloween and New Year's Eve and all those guys, by all means, I, you know, every have every holiday for whatever reason have it, but bring back Christmas. That's my idea. Okay, Benji, take it away. Bring, bring back Christmas. Bring back well, Christmas. I suppose uh, we'll, we'll get on to your work with us at uh, Big Finish in a bit, Sadie. But I guess let's start at the beginning. How did you get into acting? What was, where did it all begin for you? Oh, God. Um, so my parents' agent took me on when I was really young. And then I used to just go up for auditions and stuff after school. So I don't think I ever really even asked to do it. It just sort of kept happening. <laughs> <laughs> Child labour. Um, but <laughs> I always really enjoyed it. And it's obviously when you're younger and you don't have the 
idea of the business periphery of it it was just really good good fun so yeah I just got into it through my parents really so it's just something that yeah you just thought oh, well I'm doing this now I'm, I'm just gonna enjoy the ride and, <laughs> but it's nice though I think it's nice you know that way that you kind of it's something that you've just always done so it must be it must feel quite natural for you now to just you know to be doing that because you've got quite a few strings to your bow haven't you you do lots of different things I know that you you do a lot of writing as well uh, and also you've got your uh, your Instagram stuff which we'll talk about as well um later on but yeah it's it's what what a ride that must be yeah, I think in such a changing modern world, if you're a creative person, you've got to try and have a few different income streams, haven't you? Otherwise, you can kind of cut yourself off. So, yeah, I have a few different things in, in development at the moment. So aside from Big Finish, I'm writing a horror film script for someone um, and also another book and just various little bits and bobs here and there. So, yes, we'll, we will see what uh, what 2022 holds. Um, but hearing Joey talk about new Orleans is there ever a convention that's that's down there because I've I've never been there and I would love to go of all the places there in America comes. we'll we'll make one for you sweetie we will yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Fraser said that he wants to go to, to New Orleans as well so so Fraser and I would would definitely go well, <laughs> well, you mean Fraser Hines Yes, yes, yes. Oh boy, uh, we don't have enough, the bars. Wouldn't have enough alcohol for him. He's gonna have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one. Yeah, we yeah. tell but, some impressive stories at certain alcoholic levels. That's what going on. I can only imagine. Yeah, yeah. Because you did a convention, didn't you, just before Christmas, Sadie? Chicago Tardis. Yeah, which, we went which... over to Chicago. Yeah, it was lovely. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was, it was really good fun, and obviously not being able to travel for such a long time when it feels like a longer time than it was. It was just so nice to um, be able to sit and talk with people and just connect with people again because it, it just feels so dehumanising when you can't, you know. Obviously, like Benji and I have known each other now, I guess the best part of a year or something, and we've never met. But you know, it's just nice to get to connect with people. So yeah, no, it's a really good convention, really good fun. It's strange, isn't it, how, you know, going back in, into society with things like that and like with COVID and stuff and suddenly you, you forget all these things that you do, like the convention circuits and stuff like that. You forget that, that that's all going on again. It's 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 yeah, it's a strange sort of thing. But it's so nice that, you know, because that was I think Joe, you were saying this is your first U.S. convention since you were really young, wasn't it, when you used to go with your mum? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think it was actually, although it was quite strange because some people swore that I had been there in 2008, that they'd seen me there. <laughs> I definitely was not there. But yeah, no, it was the first the first um, American one since, yeah, since I, my mum when I was eight. So, wow. Yeah, big gap, big time well, gap. Okay, so having that, and about sort of everybody who's traveled from the UK to the US doing conventions, Sadie, the difference what do you think is the difference as far as the audience is concerned and how they how they treat you out there that's a really good question i think it's just so much bigger in terms of just like the cosplayers and mm -hmm. the amount of people that are there and i think i guess maybe because there was such a long time where it was so difficult for fans in america to access um sort of Doctor Who in the same way, even to get sort of a copy of the Radio Times or a Target novel, that there's mm. kind of still that gap where people in the UK maybe take it for granted a bit more um, mm. within the fandom, mm. whereas in America, I think there's just an intensity about it that we don't always have in the UK. Yeah, yeah, the, Brit the Brits, and rightfully oh. so, tend to be very proprietary about it, but where, where the Americans were concerned, I mean, it's. I remember your mom telling me uh, one of her first conventions at the peak of the show's popularity in the '80s, with with so many people just it just uh, just just jamming the the queues. She she said she positively felt like a beetle because <laughs> 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 I mean, of the popularity. So I mean, we we love Doctor Who. We've always had an appreciation, of, you know, a, a nice a, a soft spot in our hearts, but we're not going to be as nitpicky as, as, as the folks in the UK would be. And um, so, yeah, there is a, there is a huge gulf of a difference there. Yeah, well, this is the perfect opportunity. Uh, just going to have to stop you there for a moment, Sadie, because we have got a commercial break. So it's the perfect opportunity. <laughs> way I've never had to do that before. It's really bizarre. <laughs> it's very strange. Um, but we'll join you in a few moments time. 
when we return to the legend of the traveling tardis please continue to stay logged on tune in and become part of the legend we're going to continue our discussion with the lovely sadie miller I absolutely tell you how sick I am. I hit the wrong thing. Hang tight. Here we go. <laughs> Jackie Sonnenberg's My Soul to Keep is a ghost story rooted in the realities of actual cults. When 13-year-old Sky Monroe arrives at her new boarding school, all she can think about is death and connecting with the afterlife. Soon, she discovers her school's spirituality group, the Guardians of Light, and they have a secret. They can speak with the dead, and the organization is a cult. But this isn't Skye's only problem. The campus house where Skye resides is haunted, and even the ghosts have an agenda. They intend on getting the souls they want. Filled with mystery and intrigue plucked straight from the headlines, author Jackie Sonnenberg's research and attention to detail Give this ghost story an even more eerie atmosphere. Find My Soul to Keep on Amazon.com today. Oh, brilliant! It's hard to believe that in the 56-year history of the greatest sci-fi television show in the English language, there has never been a fan guide to Doctor Who. Official books might give you what they think you need to know, but only a guide written by a true fan will give you what you really want to know. Join Whovian, the brilliant Mackenzie Flaw, as she takes you on an intensive journey inside the world of the first female Doctor. In the Binge Watcher's Guide to Doctor Who, Season 11. Right, let's get a shift on. You're watching this on the YouTube channel, a Facebook page, a Twitch, or wherever, even on our Twitter page. We're powered by Ragin'. Hey there, this is Meredith Lochran with Ragin'. And I wanted to let you know that we encourage and promote independent creators and their projects through organic interaction, consultations, and more. Visit Nita and me at RaginABC.com. For details and contact information. Hit the button. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Thank you. Welcome to the Legend of the Traveling Artist. My name is Dave Rose. I have a very special guest host, Benji Clifford from BigFinish.com. And we have the lovely Sadie Miller today. And take it away. Benji. Well, Sadie. Uh, I think this is the, a good opportunity for some of our panel to uh, to chip in with a, a question for you. Uh, has anybody got anything they'd like to ask Sadie? Ooh, Who wants wow. to raise their hand first? Oh, my <laughs> goodness, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. okay, so, okay, Sadie, here we go. I'm going to ask this question, being that you're a doc. I'm assuming you're a hooving, correct, Sarah Sadie? Yes, yes, yes absolutely. Yes. Okay, I got to ask. Who's your doctor? Now, I'm not saying who's your favorite doctor. Who is your doctor? I did specify that carefully. And then who's your favorite doctor? <laughs> um, so I guess that is really difficult. For me, I, I really like Christopher Eccleston. Okay. I think that he kind of encapsulates a lot of what I respond to as as a doctor I think that he is very engaging but also there's kind of something a bit off about him you never kind of quite know what he's going to do and I think that the doctors that followed him were a lot more palatable I don't know if I like um a lot more sort of commercial in terms of casting and I think he I just I find him really engaging the first time I, I saw him as the doctor I didn't think I connected him with that much but having rewatched the series again I, I i really really like him i think he he was onto something well, the first time ever that i can think of or at least if anybody benji if you want to correct me or anybody wants to correct me on this that we really had a doctor that had a story arc attached to it because he had ptsd from the time war and everything mm-hmm. so russell t brings him back and kind of i think evolved the character 
mm. from where we've been used to it going from William Hartnell all the way up to uh, Colin Baker. And then you start to see some evolution with the trial of the Time Lord. And then you see Sylvester with his story arcs and Ace being like kind of the first Bad Wolf companion where it, it was kind of... So you kind of see it. And then I see the... Um, after all that time and the time war and big finish bringing it back with the eighth doctor that you start seeing that arc now what was the episode that finally brought you in to doctor who what was the episode was it the first episode or did it take some time to get used to that i think it probably took me a little bit of time i i'm not very good at um i i mean even with mum's stories i don't really know <laughs> any of the names <laughs> of the episodes um That's okay. It's, um, <clears throat> I guess, probably the, the first um, one. Is it Rose, the very first mm -hmm. episode yes. that he's in? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think probably that when they're kind of running through the department store with um, that Auton, you know, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Monster. I think that for me, it just kind of crashed back into to how you wanted to see, to see the character. What was your relationship with Doctor Who growing up? Because I'm right in thinking, because we're relatively around the same age, and, and growing up when we did, Doctor Who wasn't on the television at all. Is what I think fans call the wilderness years. Um, yeah. And so, and so, I remember when I when I got into Doctor Who, not many people, certainly nobody at my school, even had a, had a clue what it was. Mm. Uh, and obviously, you coming from that background, and would you you would obviously, you know, you your mum was very involved in that community. And as we know, Doctor Who and that community were really active in the time when it wasn't on the television. What was it like for you kind of growing up at that time? Um, I think that's really interesting. Yeah, because obviously, yeah, it wasn't on television at all. But there were still kids in my school playing, you know, Daleks and stuff in the playground. And I always kind of got roped into having to play Doctor Who with them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I was never really that interested in it growing up. And I think like getting older I have more of a respect for not just the program but the people behind it that you know or the writers and producers Philip Hinchcliffe, Dougie Campfield you know days gone by right up until present day um yeah I mean I watched it a bit with my mum but I think as a child watching Doctor Who with her the person that was on screen it was almost like seeing a relative of my mum because she didn't look like that anymore and she didn't talk like that anymore but it was still <laughs> somehow her like when you show your own kids photos of you as a baby they're like who's that what so um I, I never kind of connected it until a bit later but yeah isn't it weird that our, our generation I guess is since the program started is the only one that really has this massive gap of just no one and then when was the Paul McGann film 96 yeah I guess that must have been the closest that we ever got to having a a doctor. Hmm. Yeah. Which is really can they say, yeah. Could, Go ahead, could, could I just ask? Yeah. Um, how old were you, Sadie, when it dawned on you uh, of <laughs> how uh, appreciated or famous uh, your mum was? Um, and even to some extent, your dad. And uh, what was it? Because uh, I, I read an article recently that um, uh, Charlotte Barker, who was Ronnie Barker's daughter, uh, oh. It only registered with her when they were uh, in Paris viewing the <laughs> Mona Lisa, and she noticed that people were staring at her dad and not the Mona Lisa. <laughs> oh wow! That's a lovely story. Oh, yeah. um, I think I think because of the conventions, by about five or six years old, I kind of was like, ah, okay, so there's this thing called Doctor Who, and and people want to to meet my mum because of it, and there's this big blue box that people keep coming in and out of, and ah, okay, this is this is what's going on. But um, when I was younger, really, my mum did an advert for Iceland. So before Kerry Katona, there was Elizabeth Sladen, and she um. Yeah, she was like the archetypal mum character doing a lot of these adverts. So people would just shout at us in the street sometimes, like, where are you going on your holidays? Iceland. You know, thinking they were very clever oh, and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> so it was just <laughs> more embarrassing, people really. People but when you're a child, your parents are just embarrassing anyway, aren't they? No matter, you know, I guess if you're Shiloh, Jodie Pitt, you're like, oh, my parents are so embarrassing. You know, go to Malawi <laughs> again. Like, oh, you know, I, I think that's just kind of how it um What's well, some parents pull out the old Polaroid pictures. Your mom oh, pulls God. out a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a little Definitely. different. Huh? 
<laughs> that side there. I, I just want to get back to the uh, question, Sadie, because when you got started and everything, what was the one moment that just said, this is going to be my long, lifelong ambition. I'm going to be a creator. I'm going to be a writer. When What was that defining moment? Because you said you were kind of, I don't want to say dragged into it, but you were brought into it. But what was the moment that you said, you know what, this is my life, this is my life right now. This is happening. Sure. I mean, I honestly have never had that moment. I've had a very sporadic career. I was incredibly lucky to oh. get introduced to it as a child and then get to kind of dip in and out of it before it really even registered, you know, as a professional or, you know, it was something that you would be paid for. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I had no idea. And I've I've had like other careers, like when I first had my my family I worked in property for a few years you know to get my um to get a mortgage <laughs> so I've kind of um oscillated between a lot of things but um now my children are a bit older kind of to go back into creativity full time is really exciting um and I don't know I think when you're a creative person even if you're doing other things it's always there in the background it's just part of you isn't it um mm -hmm. I think no, that's fine there. So it was, it was, it was food and staying alive. Yes. <laughs> yes, <exactly. laughs> that was the segment. That's it. Hey, uh, yeah, if I do this, I live. Yeah, <laughs> it is. This is good stuff. Right? Totally. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, Dave, did you have any questions? For the well, I was, was going to say, so you, you kind of came back into Doctor Who with the rest of us when, in 2005, but you... Not not on screen, but as in the public kind of came back more in 2016 because you put out your first book um, about Lethbridge Stewart. What, how, tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Your brain. Sure. So, um, so Andy Frankham Allen is uh, the you know creative director of, of Candy Jar, and he approached me and asked me if I would like to write this book. And I was a little hesitant, really, because I don't. I, I enjoy Doctor Who, but I don't know the canon of it in the way that the you know the fans really do. Um, and I was anxious to write for such a well-known character. Um, and I was also um, pregnant at the time, so we had quite a long period of back and forth with it. Um, but it was really exciting and um, nice to do a collaborative you know project with someone else with an editor that you can work so closely together with. Um, and hopefully, at some point, I will get to write for them again. But it's just trying to fit everything fit everything in now um but it was a really great experience um and nice to do something again in the in the doctor who universe hmm. now your children following suit as far as their career goals they're gonna go mommy i want to be a doctor <laughs> <laughs> the um, doctor the doctor the um, doctor yeah. I would, uh, uh, doctor yes mm -hmm. different type of doctor no. Sure. Well, I mean, they're only two and five, so they're still very small. Um, but my five-year-old actually does want to be a doctor, so um, okay. we'll we will wait to wait and see what kind. <laughs> well, every child changes careers between ages three and twelve, so <laughs> at least sixteen hundred times. Definitely. Absolutely. So first, that's a good thing. That's a good thing to want to be when you're a kid. You know, it's funny, isn't it? How you always want to be doctors, firemen, policemen, mm. or bizarrely train drivers. They seem to be the main jobs that people want to be for some reason. Mm. Or, mm. Act, or actors, to be fair. Mm. And now we run podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember so, when I, I worked with kids, and um, and it, the, the, the 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 sort of wide thing that everybody said they wanted to be was just famous. There's no. I said, okay, well, how are you going to be famous? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just want to be famous. Uh, right. Yeah. That, what was? Well, I'll win a talent program. Okay. What What are you going to do? I don't know. Right, okay. Right. <laughs> I think that's a <laughs> modern <laughs> thing. <laughs> Anyone can be famous because you've got YouTube and you've got TikTok and you've got whatever the next big thing is. Uh, Anyone can be famous without even realizing. Yeah, My favorite thing so is when, when you walk in, walk in the dog, and you just see people looking utterly ridiculous filming TikToks. And of course, for them, they're so in that world and they're doing these stupid dances. When actually, from from me watching, I just think, "What are you doing? You look utterly stupid." But you won't catch me doing the dances. Don't worry. But you it's will an catch me. Phrase though, wanting to be famous is a really mm. interesting yeah. phrase. It yeah. is. It's it's that sort yeah. of. I don't. I don't know what it is. I want to be famous for, but I just want to be famous. It's. It's. Yeah. It's. A, it's a very strange sort of thing. But of course, that's because all the programs I think we watch are just talent things, aren't they? And things where mm. people, their ultimate goal is to get famous. Well, the Kardashians lay the foundation for that. That's a given. Mm. 
Um, yeah, but unfortunately, they, they did without talent. That, yeah. that be fair, my, my sister's obsessed with decade. the Kardashians, in fairness, and and Desperate Housewives and all those types of programs. Mm. Um, you know, it's 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 got an audience, and uh, we'll be we'll be joining uh, you after this break. Now, don't go away, and don't switch over to uh, to Big Brother or anything like that. Just don't do it. Don't do it. When we return. Please continue to stay logged on. Tune in. We're going to continue our conversation with Sadie Miller in just a few moments. <laughs> Meet the doctor. I'm the doctor. But not the one you were expecting. All right, sexy. It's time to go home. Doctor Who Velocity. Streaming now. This is Cosplay Michael with the Hanging Earth Love Show. I want to tell you about my friends at Embellished Effects in Orlando, Florida. They've got makeup, costumes, and props for all of your costume needs. And the team at Embellished Effects is helpful and friendly. Embellished Effects is one of my favorite places, and I know it will be yours too. I'll see you there. Or go to EmbellishedEffects.com and remember, cosplay is for everyone. And I know that commercial is slightly outdated, but I did check the website, and the game looks like it's moving into its beta version. So we can't wait, and we'll be performing that uh, live here where we're going to be playing the cards. So if you haven't gotten your free Pandex yet, go to doctor-worldsapart.com. That's doctor-worldsapart.com. You sign in every day. You get 10 Pandex for free, and you can play the game for free. But if you want the big cards, you might have to just spend a little bit. But trust me, we're going to have some fun with that at Doctor Who dash worldsapart.com that's going to be coming up soon here in 2022 want to thank you again for joining us here at the legend of the traveling tardis my name is christian basil without the voice we got special guest host benji clifford and the lovely and talented sadie miller who's been joining us as special guest here from bigfinish.com sadie i have a question are you talking about earlier about passions and uh what we want to be known for out of your creative arsenal as far as writing as far as voiceovers and as acting where do you, what is your, where does your passion predominantly lie? If you want to pick one of those avenues and say, I want to be known for this, which one would you pick? Well, that's a really good question. Um, I think probably now at this stage, I would say writing. Um, I think it's probably more um, tangible for me to be able to do kind of juggling being a mum and writing um, versus acting. Um, so I think I, I would probably go go with, with the writing side of things now. Okay. Is there something that you want to write that you haven't and you say, oh, this is something I wanted to work on? Is it, 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 uh, could it be more science fiction or more of, you know, classical history? Is there something that you wanted to focus on a little bit more as far as getting your writing chops going there? Was there something sure, that I mean, you to do this? I, um, I love writing um, sort of thrillers, horror, fantasy, um, I guess just really solid escapist uh, literature because that is that's what I I enjoy reading what I, I connect with the most I would say so that's kind of the area that I'm looking to move move into hopefully by the end of this year going into next year as well just because obviously writing is very time consuming so you're always kind of a bit on the on the back foot but that's definitely where um, I'm sort of pitching my my career trajectory now I think Okay. So what I'm hearing here is we're going to be seeing coming from Big Finish in a couple of years a, a <laughs> thriller adventure with Sarah J. Smith and the Ninth Doctor. <laughs> well, we, we'll wait and see after Pope Jason. <laughs> 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 Send him some scripts, see what he says. All right. Um, I trust you have a thing for astrology and, and tarot cards, yeah? Yeah, no, I, I do. I, I really enjoy that that um, that side of things as well. I think Benji and I both um, both enjoy a good uh, card slinging session. Good with dabble with the arrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shall we dabble with it now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't, have you, uh, got, have I you guys got your cards? 
I've got a deck here. I have it. <laughs> 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 Shall I do it? Shall I give us a shuffle? Yeah, let's give okay. it a shuffle. Let's, let's see well, how much we, trouble we're why, in. Why don't, why, don't we set the, why don't we set the intention for this? Let's just let's just see, you know, what, what vibes are going down. Shall I just pick the one off the top? Because it's going to get very confusing. So I hold them up there. I have shuffled it. I want to turn it around, and we'll see what it is. There we go. <laughs> Is my camera reversing it's it? It might be. Yeah, it's Ace of Wands. The Ace of Wands, Ace which is one. not just uh, a Actually, great Actually, Mackenzie card. Floor would love that. <laughs> well, it's also a great uh, ITV television series back in the 70s. Oh, Ace nice. of Wands, what a great card. Card of inspiration, good ideas, good vibes, positivity, passions, which is what we're all about kind of here, aren't we, really? Yeah, definitely. I would I would say you're a passionate person, Sadie. You're certainly really passionate about this sort of this sort of stuff as well as that. I think you've got you've got an encyclopedic knowledge of of the moon cycles and <laughs> where everything is. I'm I'm, I'm always uh, in awe of your knowledge of, about that. Where did this oh, stem from? Where did all of this interest come from? So my mum and I always had like a weird little psychic sister thing going on where we would there's like a ghost in my parents house and my dad could never see it but my mum and I would would see it all the time and there would just be weird instances where someone would die but my my mum and I like we would see them afterwards before we before we knew that they that they had passed and there were just always these weird serendipities where um I don't know, things would happen that we couldn't explain except to each other. And it kind of got me more interested into what's the, what's the, um, I don't know. I feel that we're all, we're all more connected than we, than we realize. And by feeding into that, um, you kind of find different ways to connect with yourself. I don't know if that's explaining it very well, but um, yeah, it's something that I, that I enjoy definitely. And um, there's always more to learn, which is cool as well. Well, I'm seeing something maybe slightly cohesive I mean, because we're talking about Doctor Who, which is time and space, astrology. Um, and I sit here on right next door to the Kennedy Space Center, which is the platform oh, wow. that's going, yeah, we're, we're, uh, the Space Coast. Uh, the Kennedy, well, I'm over in Orlando, which is just a little more than an hour away from it. But uh, so, what was your passion to bring into astrology? I mean, is this being influenced by, you know, sci fi and Doctor Who, or is this something that came out? separate on its own because you say you discussed it with your mother oh yeah i mean i've always been interested in it since i was a little girl my mum used to have a deck of tarot cards that someone i think someone gave them to at a, a convention oh, wow. and um and she would never use them she felt that incorrectly really that tarot was sort of um you know that there was something negative associated with it that if you pulled the wrong card it could then dictate something bad was going to happen which is not what tarot obviously is about at all it's much more right. about sort of divination intuition and that sort of thing because that um, death card throws everybody off yeah, yeah and <laughs> it's the best, it's the best one to get in a reading for somebody he is the best yeah. one because the look on their face <laughs> and like, no 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 oh. stop 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 <laughs> Sure, because death is actually like a, a really positive card often to pull. Um, but yeah, serial killers, I think, leave often leave it at like um, various murder scenes and stuff because people kind of get, get tarot a bit confused. And I think people think of it as well as, um, I guess, more like fortune telling, which to me, I, I don't feel that it is at all. I, I'm quite against almost reading for other people. You should try and connect and read for yourself, really, to connect with what your own intuition is telling you, because often we don't really listen to that little inner voice when we when we really should so you think more more, more astrology is more of a self-awareness and a self-awakening than somebody sitting there with a globe in front of you going you're like okay here's your future let give me your hand you know this, oh yeah definitely. this is more of an individual type thing from your self-reflection than something that somebody projects on you and says okay this is what's going on. okay Completely. And I think we all have access to that information. Like, I don't like the idea that there's sort of this idea of the chosen ones, that there are some people that can read the cards and some people can't. You know, we all have access to that spiritual side. It's just allowing yourself to to, to find the magic of it all, really, is what I think anyway. <laughs> I just reminded that Stephen Wright joke. He said he was playing poker with tarot cards. He got a full house and four people died. So <laughs> <Yeah. that's> <laughs> <laughs> I still love that joke to this day there. But so I guess you have a passion for space as well. Um, I mean, <clears throat> I guess in a way, I not in not in a in a scientific way, particularly. Um, but I enjoy 
learning more about astrology, which I feel is 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 separate to me as okay. like um, science, really. I'm not sure. Do you feel that they're quite quite closely linked? Okay. No, no, I totally get you there. All right. Cool. And so you look, say, sorry, I was just going to ask. Talking about astrology, then, so how how, how do you cope with this new sign of Eucus? Oh which yes, is, I mean, which has put people off kilter because for fifty, well, for sixty years, I've been a saggy hairy ass, right? <laughs> uh, but now I'm supposed to be a a Scorpio, and I have no traits of Scorpio at all, as far as I know. I fit into Sagittarius quite easily. Well, I think obviously every all the signs have kind of moved around a bit anyway with sort of the passing of time. It's difficult yes. to kind of um, align yourself with just one. And most people look to their sun sign anyway, don't they? They're, I guess, like a star sign. Um, so I think even if you know your moon and your rising, your ascending sign, you can kind of then start to fill in the gaps a bit more. Um, so I think with astrology, you can't really get started with it properly unless you have your, your birth chart. Um, yeah. But again, like I think trying to read other people's birth charts, even trying to read your own is incredibly complicated and mathematic. But <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, I, it's, it's about. yeah, I take on board what you were saying about that. We're all we're all can register things and the tarot cards. Mm -hmm. I go along with that totally uh, because it's down to self-responsibility at the end of the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100 uh, percent. It's some food for thought, isn't it? I think. Yeah. Yes. There's I'm lots of people that poo-poo it, but I, I go along with it, especially the intuitive side of things. We all at some point say something like, I knew that was going to happen, right? Because mm -hmm. you do get a sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you definitely know if somebody's come into the room. Oh, yes. And, 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 you, or, and you definitely sense, uh, as an actor on a, on a live stage, you definitely sense the mood of the audience. And you can definitely sense when the mood of the audience changes. It's it is very do 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 Yeah. yeah. Totally, definitely. Yeah. Speaking of mood, we're bringing you back to Big Finish just a little bit. And if anybody uh please check it out. We've got already at I think at least two episodes with um with Sadie Miller as playing Sarah Jane Smith. We have the third Doctor Adventures Conspiracy in Space and the Devil's Footprints. And the ones that I'm listening to right now, the third Doctor Adventures, the Unzol Incursion and the Gulf. And I've got to admit, I'm, I'm about three quarters away through the Gulf. First of all, I love, it drives me insane. And this is not a bad thing, Benji, but it's going back to when Katie was being asked uh, when we interviewed her about Big Finish and, and bringing Tim Trelaw on there. And she's saying, darling, if she did not sound anything like the third doctor, if she did not sound anything like John, I would not do this episode. <laughs> now that I'm listening to the episodes, John Colshore, Tim Trelaw, now Sadie Miller, and a, a whole cast mm -hmm. of people, I'm just like, I really can close my eyes and watch the mannerisms of the people who did this back in the 1970s mm -hmm. in my brain. Mm -hmm. You scare me, Sadie. You really do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not just the vocals. It's the mannerisms that I can see how, the, how intricate it is, you know, because you only got the voice. And that doesn't do too much, you know, when it comes to the visuals and when you see the acting. But I can see uh, Liz Shaw. I can see Sarah Jane Smith. It's kind of crazy. I don't know why, but I thought of a, a, a Star Trek episode with the, I'm not going to give too much away, but the, uh, with the golf, if anybody remembers what I'm talking about, I'm not going to give too much away, but it reminded me of a Star Trek episode. I might find it. <laughs> I forgot what the episode was called, but. Um, the interesting thing about, you know, about the recastings is it was, it was met with a real uh, mixed reaction when we announced it. Mm. And people were because people are so protective over these characters, and it's mm -hmm. like your mum, Sadie. People absolutely love her, and and you know she's <sighs> part of so many people's childhoods and growing up. Mm. And that I think, I mean, I, I can't speak for everybody, but I can say that it's really, it's really lovely to see people give it a go because that, that's the most important thing, and then actually enjoy it and listen to it and, and have such enthusiasm for it. I think is is so nice, and uh, I mean, we'll 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 go into that. 
uh, properly. We've got a break coming up in a moment. But yeah. um, I, I can certainly say with you, Sadie, when I recorded with you for that first time and you were doing something, I don't even know if it's out yet, but it was something really closely linked with that that your mum did back in the day. And I remember I, it gave me goosebumps. I was I was like, I felt quite moved by it because it was like, Aww. it was just, a, it was, I could see how much it meant to you. And yeah, it was, it was a really strange uh, experience. But don't go away. There may be more strange experiences after this spooky. <laughs> if, if it's anything like the last advert, it might have a spooky thing in it. So who knows? We'll be seeing you after are this. Are you telling me break. that my sponsors are spooky? Whatever. There was a spooky <laughs> one with, with spooky piano. Gotcha. And when we return, please continue to stay locked on to them. We will uh, wrap up our discussion with Sadie Miller and our special guest host, Benji Clifford, when we return. Sorry. <laughs> You have more options than ever before when choosing a film, a television, or internet series, a book to curl up with, or even a radio show or podcast. Get to know the people who are creating for you. The Hanging With Web Show, hosted by award-winning author and journalist G.W. Pomacher, is the Internet's fastest-growing web talk show series. The Hanging With Web Show features professional, yet casual, in-depth interviews with creative arts and entertainment pros. Meet the people behind a digital revolution in creating more quality content than ever before in the history of media. Find the Hanging With Web Show on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter, or simply go to www.hangingwithshow.com. That's www.hanginwithshow.com. Author Cindy Kep is writing on the edge. Books include Remnant in the Stars, The Loudest Actions, Lines of Succession, Mindstorm, Condemned Courier, The Yerushalon Series, and Animal Eye. Find author Cindy Kep at C K O E P P dot com today. The massive audio Doctor Who Bad Wolf Bluetooth TARDIS speaker. That's all I got to say. One word. Wow. It looks like it just jumped right off the screen. Here it is in all its Bad Wolf glory. Right here is the on off switch and the up and down volume. Right here's the speaker. The TARDIS stands about six inches from the bottom of the TARDIS all the way up to the top where the light is. Look at the detail. Wow. And don't forget to sign up for The Legend of the Traveling TARDIS on YouTube, youtube.com, The Legend of the Traveling TARDIS. You can check out our latest reviews um, on Eve of the Daleks as well as our New Year's Eve wrap-up special. And again, we want to wish everybody a very safe and happy New Year from here. I have everybody here at the Legend of the Traveling Tardis and our friends over at BigFinish.com. Uh, please check it out and uh, subscribe to either one of our YouTube channels. Uh, and you can also subscribe over at Big Finish. And don't forget, they have some special deals going on. As the um, as we enter the new year, so bigfinish.com, please subscribe now, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. We're just wrapping up our episode with special guest host Benji Clifford from bigfinish.com. Miss Sadie Mills, <laughs> thank you. This point of Miss Sadie Miller, yeah, there you go, exactly. The lovely Sadie Miller, who plays Sarah Jane Smith in the Third Doctor audios on bigfinish.com. Here with Simon, Joey, Dave, and myself. Benji, take it away because my voice is. <laughs> you did very well there. I'm very Thank impressed. Well, let's you. jump into the big finish chat because uh, I think you know this is a, a huge thing for you. Uh, how did it? How did it sort of come about uh, when you were offered the opportunity to play Sarah Jane Smith? Uh, did you see it coming? Is it something that you you always sort of thought might happen, or did it hit you completely out of the blue? Oh gosh, no, not at all. I mean, I think. Um, when Big Finish started doing, when they finally got Tom to do it, because I think he was resistant for a while with the stories that I heard. Um, I think originally he was going to start doing them with Mum, and then obviously she passed away, so they started them with Louise, was the story that I 
heard. Yes, that's, um, that's correct. That is completely correct. And the story's redacted when, uh, ah. to accommodate Louise. Yeah, that's absolutely the truth, yeah. Oh, okay. Because um, sometimes, like, my mum would tell me things, and sometimes they're true, and sometimes they're they're not. So <laughs> I always have to like get someone else to verify. Okay, so yes, that's true. So then I obviously assumed that they would never touch the character again, because um, it's just quite difficult, isn't it? I mean, when someone passes away, to then re recast it. Um, so David Richardson, the producer, emailed me. Um, I think at the maybe like. Easter time 2019 and then we recorded um the Cyberman story mm -hmm. that November but it was out of the blue completely I had absolutely no idea um that it was something that anyone would ever ask me to do ever <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> a big surprise really mm -hmm. well, I have a question for you then in that case oh, yeah. um do you record your first audio with Big Finish playing your mother's title role you hear it for the first time yourself as you playing her role how did that make you feel I mean, just surreal, really. I think um, as as an as an as an actor, like when you hear yourself, you're always hypercritical. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I kind of try and have it on in the background whilst I'm doing something else, not to kind of critique myself too much. But I was, um, I guess, just what was more important to me was that other people would like it and would accept it. Um, because it was such a big thing to do. And I think Big Finish were very clever because the Cyberman story, Sarah's not really in it very much. <laughs> so if it was a disaster, they'd be like, no, that's the only one. We're not doing any more. Um, so yes, it's just been a bit of a whirlwind really though since then. It's been been such a great adventure. And let me what? just say, say this for everybody. I'm sorry, I didn't get you off the joke, but let me say this for everybody. Big spoilers ahead. Sadie <laughs> is incredibly good. She's oh, yeah. freaking yeah. When I when I first heard the uh, when I started listening to the golf, I was like I had to rewind it. Like wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. It was it was some something similar to that I did with uh, Tim because you have to. Re I rewind it back. It's just like I know she was your mother, but I'm like you really get this character as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like, mm -hmm. you pick, you're picking up the you're picking up the ball as if it was never dropped. And to me, that's a testament to just how you explored the uh, the character and how you're running with it right now. Oh, thank you. That's so fine. Thank you, Christian. No problem. Yeah. No, yeah. The ahead, vocal, well, the vocal inflections, you uh, you mentioned this in a, in a previous interview with with another podcast and the fact that you were trying to at least get the essence of of, uh, of how your mother's voice was when she was mm -hmm. on the roll. And, and yeah, definitely spot on. Definitely spot on. Um but but when you're recording, it's I mean, it's one thing to record something with Trelore. And I know you haven't seen them because, you know, people aren't in a giant studio with microphones like in the old radio days. No. But um, but I know that before you did Cybermen with Tom, you did meet Tom um, at, at a convention or such. And, and, and obviously Tom being Tom, uh, I don't know if you have the chance to actually personally work with him um so much to a point where you know you're probably within uh, the, the same room but you know separated by glass and, and and you're reading lines with him and, and of course just having that big booming voice <laughs> ah and and the bravado and and you know and just probably him arguing with with nick saying you know nick saying no it should be like this no no it should it should be like that you know and, and and all that and uh and considering i mean regardless of how old the man is chen tani to him but i mean he's he's still tom baker and so so i'm sure i, I i'm sure that you going into this you know you you knew who <laughs> who you're up against it's, it's not like max of the day or anything no but but it's you know, <laughs> but but you knew what kind of personality he had and at the same time i'm sure he he um he he treated you as not liz's daughter but as an equal. Yeah, I mean, Tom is, Tom is lovely. I've met him quite a few times and, you know, I've said this before, I, every time you meet him, it's like you meet him for the first time. And I think it's the combination of that bravado of him being the character. But also I think, um, I do think that Tom is a, I don't know, like all actors, he's a bit nervous, you know, he's, he's got an expectation that this is, that people want something from him. They want this this doctor from him and he's always got to deliver it. And I think that's, you know, quite, quite tough really. Um, but no, he's, he's lovely and a bit naughty and a bit silly. And he was, yeah, it's nice to just sit and, and chat with him. And like you say, you know, he's in his mid eighties now, I think, and he's still just, just as, um, 
spirited and everything that you would you would want um when meeting tom you know he he doesn't let you down <laughs> yeah i i think the the one personality that's it's more i mean it's one thing for tom to be the doctor but it's another thing to experience tom baker <laughs> because <laughs> i mean never mind the doctor because it's all scripted and such and, he, and yes he brought himself to that character but just being sitting in the same room I mean, I'm to be a fly in a room just just to just to hear what he has to say in between takes and just that behavior. You know, we Americans, we have our William Shatner, you Brits, you have your Tom Baker. <laughs> I, I love it when we I, I've done an interview with also like Michael Jason and it's just like I love it when oh. actors get to a certain age. They just don't care. No. They just live whatever comes out of their mouth. Yeah. And I remember I was being part of an interview with Michael Jason. He was saying some stuff and uh, the showrunner and I were going like, can we, can we, can that fly? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can we? Because you have that PC culture, but you have these guys who grew up and, and guys and gals who grew up this way and they, they say their mm -hmm. piece and then they just don't care. Yeah. And so it's like, like a William Shatner who's going on yeah. his Twitter like yeah. mad, but yeah. uh, well, I'll tell you, with, I've, with Tom, he's, I've, although, you know, he's Tom Baker, he's, he, I'll tell you one, he really does care. I've, I've, uh, I've uh, okay. engineered quite a few sessions with him now. I've got one coming up in a few weeks and, um, and he reads everything. He marks things up. He writes alternative lines. Mm -hmm. So if he sees something and he thinks, well, I, I wouldn't say it like that. Um, he he mm -hmm. changes mm -hmm. it. He comes, he asks questions. Well, why is he doing that? I mean, if he says it like this. Surely he should do it like this, and he's really on it. Um, and a lot of the the comedy that that you you hear, though, on the other hand, is directly from Tom. Is he you, just you know, comes out with it? He'll he'll you, completely change it. Yeah, you know, Benji, I really appreciate your timber. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Yes, <laughs> well, you know, I learned it from the best. Yes, <laughs> yes. I, I because... think about it as, as far as creativity, I'm I'm sure he gives a damn because he's he's been very very. On spot, but I meant like, uh, what was it my favorite line from uh, William Shatner? You say sabotage, I say sabotage, or yeah. whatever that line is. Yeah. It's, it, it, you know, it's just, it's, it, he's going to do what he does, and that's who he is. I meant my dad in his later years was the same thing. I mean, and never, uh, never mind, never mind international talk like a pirate day. Tom's birthday's <laughs> Tom's birthday's on the twentieth. That's uh, eleven days from now from this interview. Yes. We should make this international talk like Tom Baker Day. Yes. Okay. yes. <laughs> <Tom Baker. laughs> I thought that was the whole point. Nobody talks like Tom Baker, so I was just like, well, only we could try. John Coulter <laughs> kind of comes very close, and Joey showed us a little. Oh yeah, he's great. Mm. Uh, Sadie, when so, you're talking of talking of voices, did you? Obviously, I mean, you grew up with your mum, so you, you're going to know how she is. But did you do a lot of, of research? Did you sit down and say, I need to, to really get Sarah Jane and, and work this out? Or was it something you thought, no, I know this, I can do this, I've got this, I can go in? No, I watched, um, I got, I downloaded BritBox and I just cannonballed <laughs> through all of her stories and just watched them all <laughs> and um, tried to find, I think, coincidentally enough the first story time warrior i think has a lot of great sort of story arc moments so you know sarah meeting new characters her being in danger her being the one that you know takes control of the situation There's so many little moments that then you can kind of link back to that often repeat themselves in many of the stories so um no i definitely did <laughs> did my research i was a bit worried <laughs> and did you come back through oh, yeah. and kind of do some of her oh sorry go ahead benji oh no no, no. feel free feel free Okay, I was gonna say, did you did you come back through and listen to some of her big finish ones? Because of course she had her own Sarah Jane Smith ser two series of of big finish, who had a, a a bit character. What was her name? Natalie Natalie Redford. Yeah. There was a great actress yeah. that played her. It was great. I, I wish I could hear your your Sarah and well your Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I haven't actually listened to those um, for years, but I should do that actually. Um, I think I've still got the CDs at my dad's house. I need to go look those up. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're great. I was just, I was listening to some of them after I finished off with the golf and stuff. I was like, oh. <laughs> I mean, they're they're fat, they're fat little stories in themselves. Mm -hmm. well, and you were great in them and getting the, oh. you know, getting to knowing where it went, you know, behind the mic was, was definitely interesting to to hear that, you know, Hear her doing it. Hear you opposite her, and then moving along. It was just—it was really neat to to hear. 
Oh, that's so cool. And it wasn't long after that that then Sarah Jane Adventures proper happened. So mm-hmm. um, I guess that kind of curtailed that, that series. But it's interesting. It might have gone gone somewhere else. I don't know what Big Finish had had planned with it. But, yeah. I just had a really disturbing story idea. I'm kind of bordering on Natalie King Cole and, and Matt King Cole. <laughs> Where Sadie and her mom take some audios from her mom and just have them talk to each other, and <laughs> all just have them just banter for a while. That would be all. I mean, we could really That'd have some cool. play on this. Um, Sadie, as we're coming up to the end of the of the episode, what is what holds for you in the future? Where do you see yourself coming across, and what kind of projects are you working on now that you sure. like? Oh, well, thank you. Well, um, I, I do have some writing projects rumbling away, as is the annoying way of the business. I can't really <laughs> talk about them. But yeah, a busy, a busy, uh, I nearly said 2021. <laughs> 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 you were in. It's a nightmare. 2020 times three. Um, yeah, lots of nice things coming up and also some more recordings for Big Finish maybe as well. So thank you very much for having me, having me on and letting me have a chat with you guys. That's awesome. And Benji, that's happening, right? We're going to have more audios with Sadie here. Oh, I'm, I, I'm certain of it. I'm certain of it. Thank you so much, you. everybody here, for tuning in. Thank you, Sadie, for being here. Thank you to our wonderful uh, panelists as well. Uh, you're all fantastic. It's been an absolute blast. And uh, we'll be seeing you next time uh, for this lovely podcast. So from me, Benji, it's goodbye. See you later. Thank you, folks. Let me just switch this over. We're just—I'm just, just going to do some closing statements there. And you said the big stay- finish podcast. Then that's why I stopped. I was like, seeing you. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Oh, no. <laughs> sorry, sorry. sorry. One. <laughs> this episode. Go ahead. I don't care. <laughs> They're all free at some point there. Uh, but we just want to let everybody know. Um, even though it's been a little bit trying uh, this weekend, this coming weekend, and I got to look at the date. I am so sorry. Uh, if you want to see the Legend of the Traveling Tardis team, we're going to be at Central Florida Comic Con the 15th and the 16th. We're still at the R, uh, the RP Funnings, uh, RP Lakeland. We're going to be in Lakeland <laughs> at the RP Funding Center. So check us out out there. Um, we'll it's a catalog a where in England, of... the Lakeland, is it the Lakeland catalog? I think it is. <laughs> Maybe. I was thinking that. It's well, in the middle of nowhere. Fun. It's yeah, kind of like yeah, there we go. Kissimmee and Lakeland and Tampa are somewhere out here, somewhere out there. You're going to be an and, Avon next. And places. <laughs> Bing bong. <laughs> We're at your door. You can never have the show proper. Uh, again, thank you for Benji uh, Clifford from, from BigFinish.com. Thank you, Sadie Miller. Thank you so much oh, out there. Um, Sadie, stick around for just a few moments after the closing uh, segment. Um, we want to thank everybody. Please stay safe out there. Don't forget to subscribe, as you can see at the bottom of YouTube.com, the legend of the traveling TARDIS um, okay and no worries there folks please stay uh, safe out there whatever you need to do to take care of yourself again don't forget to go to our Facebook page we are uh, over 56,000 Facebook followers and we are climbing up to 57 rapidly you want to advertise on our show uh, sage at hangingwithshow.com christian at the hangingwithshow.com and also don't forget to download the audios for free iHeartRadio, sci-fi.radio spotify wherever you listen to your favorite podcast thank you so much folks stand by and um please stay safe um i'll get my voice back eventually <laughs> and again please continue to become part of the legend <laughs>